Welcome back, friends, to another Microsoft Flight Simulator tutorial. So, today we are going to take a look at how to fly a VOR DME Arc approach in Microsoft Flight Simulator. I'm on, a, I'm on the ground at the moment. We are parked in Turkey, Antalya Airport, and our destination is Rhodes in Greece. And it has a beautiful uh, DME arc approach. And that's what we are going to uh, do today. I, dis I started the video while I'm on the ground just to do the talking, but I will take off, program the aircraft, take off, uh, get up in the air, and I will bring you guys back when we are ready to fly the approach, and we will discuss and take a look at the charts and everything uh, around how to fly the VOR DME arc. In the meantime, if you are enjoying my videos, please give me a thumbs up and if you are not a subscriber, please consider subscribing and turning on the notifications for future episodes. So I will see you up in the air. Welcome back, friends. We are cruising at 32,000 feet uh, to our destination, Lima Golf. Romeo Papa, I believe, was the IQ code of the airport. And I brought you guys to discuss the charts. Because we have... Uh, we have not too much distance to cover. And we should start our descent. Um, to 6000 feet. Which is the the altitude on our uh, star, which we will look here in a second. But I don't want to be too late, so I'm gonna start the descent, and we'll take it from there. So let me put the chart to the screen, and we'll discuss the chart. So for our for our arrival. We are going to do, I think it was, no, not that one, it was this chart, yes. So we are coming through here to Lakat, and we are doing the Lakat 1S arrival. And as you see, 6,000 feet, 290 uh, is the course, and then we'll make a left turn, and as you see here, DME 15 arc par at 6000 feet. So par is the VOR station. We need to tune this to our nav radio. That's the first thing. And then we need to track that VOR. And this arc is, I think this like of a circle segment where the DME is the radius, so 15 miles, so we have to stay 15 miles away from that VOR station while we fly this arc uh, to here, and then when we pass this waypoint, we need to descend to 5000, and then 065 is our uh, course into the runway, alright? And we'll make that right turn to radial 245. And if we take a look at the the instructions for Lockhart 1 Sierra intercept power radial 110 inbound to DME 17 17 DME par so we should start the left turn at 17 miles from par to 245 inbound to Eriba so to Eriba Eriba is this waypoint right there 245 inbound uh, to intercept that we will fry the arc so that's the arrival, okay? So this is the DME, VOR DME arc. We are now descending. And if we take a look at the approach, I will show the approach and we will take a look at the, uh, the aircraft and the ND to see the, how it looks like uh, in the flight plan. So this is the DME arc. And any DME arc will have a distance and altitude and some instructions on how to fly the arc. For the approach, we are doing a VORZ runway 06 approach. 
and as you see this is our arc we fly the arc our final approach course is 065 and VOR station frequency is 108.6 final approach course at this uh, at DME 6 DME we need to be at 2000 feet so that's important and our decision altitude is 1100 feet uh, airport elevation runway elevation and there is the vertical profile we are coming from 3000 at 6 DME 2000 and then at this point here this is 1100 we need to have the runway in sight visually otherwise we do a missed approach and that is the approach briefing and this is the missed approach instructions crumb straight ahead to par VOR intercept radial 050 par to DME 10 DME par then turn right to RDS VOR climbing to 6000 so RDS VOR is here write this and 6000 is our missed approach altitude so that is the debriefing for you guys I hope this is uh, well explained let's take a look at how it looks like on our uh, ND so that is where we are enter destination data we will do that here in a second and if you look and if I if I drop the range that's the arc you can leave it to the GPS GPS will fly that arc follow per perfectly but that's not uh, that's not a VOR DME arc then that's a GPS approach so let's go and tune uh, let's go to the radio navigation page and tune the VOR uh, frequency which was 108 decimal 6 so 108 decimal 6 oops I didn't type the 0 that is VOR final approach course is 065 we will put the course in here and then there is an ADF station close by um, which is the I'm trying to see the frequency oh this is an NDB not an ADF that is an NDB station and the frequency for that I will look it up I will look it up I'm not seeing it right now but we are not too worried about that uh, anyway so let's go and program our arrival our meta information is here so we'll go to the performance we'll go next phase and approach so the QNH is 1012 so 1012 we'll enter it here temperature is 21 degrees so we enter that here wind is 120 at 5 knots 120 at 5 and the transition altitude is 6000 for roads barometric minimum is 1100 we'll plug it in there and that's it landing speed is 126 so let's go back to the arc mode and to track the VOR we need to flip this switch so that we will see the VOR here let's increase the range and see where we are at okay we are getting close to our entry point which is this this is where we should uh, start making the turn and all will make sense when we get closer I promise so we are descending down to 6000 and we'll flick to the uh, local barometric pressure setting I'm getting outer tank fuel cross uh, something message I think that's because of this we'll keep the cross feed on I think we have some sort of uh, weight imbalance and 
let's see what happens if we turn the NTI systems is it going to yell at us no we're good it was icy so we are descending to 6000 we shouldn't have any problems and the speed should drop down uh, to 250 automatically we'll see if it will drop I I haven't flown the A320 uh, recently so I'm not sure what the latest updates brought to the mod the aircraft should slow down when we get close to 10,000 that's for sure and we'll see we'll see about that here in a second because we are getting close to 10,000 All right. All is looking good, if you ask me. We have a little bit of ice on the wings. A little bit here too. Nothing too crazy. So we should be fine. We are getting close to 10,000 and I'm not sure if it will slow down to 250. If it doesn't, we will we will manually slow it down. Looking good, looking good. So now as you see we started to slow down. We'll turn the landing lights on at this point. And we'll keep all the lights on for now. We'll turn the seatbelt signs to on because we are now arriving or getting close to our destination. And I will keep the range at 20 and keep you guys close to here so that we all see how it looks like. As you see, before 10,000 we slowed down to 250. Now we will start descending again. We have a little bit of distance to cover at before lockout. We decided started to pick the signal as you see. We are 30 miles away from par VOR. And we are getting close to 6000 which is a good sign. And we will manually descend the aircraft uh, from 6 to 5 as you remember from the chart. And then from to 5 to 3000 and then from 3000 to 2000 at 6 DME to par uh, for our final so we need to be at 2000 when we are at uh, 6 miles away from the VOR station alright and we will get some preparation here as we know we will be turning towards uh, left I will keep this to at 245 235 or 240 heading and we will see if we can manage to make that turn uh, perfectly while keeping the distance as fi at 15 miles so that is that is the plan okay so the fuel imbalance I believe is gone if we check the fuel page real quick 740 no it didn't okay that is a little bit weird we have a we have quite a f different fuel imbalance I'm not sure what's happening and I keep getting this warning in each flight with A320 and the cross feed is on let's take a look at here hydraulic pumps fuel fuel pumps are on not sure why we are we are using the cross feed 
Well, we'll manage that. We will manage that. Um, okay, we're making the turn. That's the island roads right there. We are at 6000. That is a good sign. And we will get this to 10 mile distance. And we will zoom in a little bit. And we are not going to activate the approach mode for this. The, uh, but we are going to do this. Activate the approach phase and confirm so that the aircraft... Oh no, what happened? What just happened? Did I made something and messed it up? Looks like I did. Oh no. Let's fix this, guys. Let's fix this. Arrival. VORZ. Like a 1S. No transition. Insert. Okay. Back to normal. So we are not going to touch anything from now on. We are getting close to that 17 miles, so we will get this to 45 and then we will take over and start making the turn. So the aircraft now should start turning because we commanded it to turn and we will drop the distance so that we see we are at 15 miles, we will overshoot this turn a little bit. That's what I'm seeing here. And we are at green dot speed. The aircraft is trying to follow the heading we gave it. We are getting a little bit closer to power. We are not keeping that 15 miles, but we will eventually keep that 15 miles. We'll keep turning. We'll keep turning. We'll keep turning towards like 210. And we'll go flaps 1. So this should help us a little bit to get back to uh, 15. We are going to aim for that. And then this is going to be a continuous turn from this point. So we are getting to 15. We will eventually get to 15 uh, DME. Keep the speed at 180 for now, and we will keep this. I try to maintain 15. That's what I'm trying to say. Uh, we were late to make the turn, but it's okay. All right, getting close to 15 now, and joining the route again is a good sign so 14.7 and this is manual guys this is all you need to do is just to manage the turn and make the aircraft follow so we are at 15 miles now we will turn to 245 and maintain that 50 like so So that's what we are trying to do. We are trying to maintain that 15 DME arc while flying it. Uh, we will set up the auto brakes to low, right? We will arm the spoilers um, and we will inform the cabin when we get closer. So 14.8 is fine. We are close to 15 and at this point we should, if we were on an online network like Vatsim, uh, we should contact ATC or ATC should have cleared us to fly the ARC. Alright, 14.9, we will gradually turn slowly to maintain 
15 miles on the DME and we are seeing the restrictions which is good we will know when to descend to 5000 and I am I am slowly increasing the heading to make the aircraft turn and follow the arc as perfectly as I possibly can so we'll, we can also take a look at from this view but I think we're good we'll get close and we'll switch to VOR or we can do this it should show us it is not showing so we will follow this we will follow this and follow the arc by following here and then we will switch to VOR when we are making the final turn and when we are ready to do the approach we have a little bit of crosswind that's also uh, pushing us towards the inside and that's one of the other reasons why we are not maintaining 15 miles on the DME but 14.9 is good enough and we'll get to 15 here in a second yeah there you go now we'll slowly turn again towards the arc to maintain 15 miles like so and this is what you should do guys stay on the arc maintain 15 miles and make the aircraft keep the turn keep turning until you fly the arc entirely to the final course all right so far so good so far so good we'll set 5000 shortly when we get past that waypoint that was a restriction you can put the terrain on if you like so that we'll have another visual uh, representation of the ground so that we know where we are Again, we are going to make another slow turn while maintaining 14.9 or 15 on the DME. There we go. Perfect. This worked pretty good. We are still on 15. We maintain this heading until we reach the next waypoint and then make another turn. We should switch to the local pressure we did and we are still looking good on the DME the outside worries me a little bit that hills are too close alright perfect we managed to make it that's great 
Okay, now we flew the arc. Perfectly. What we need to do at this point is we need to start descending to 5000. That's first thing. And we need to start turning towards the airport. That's the second thing. And we will start deploying the flaps too. So we'll turn. This line, if you follow this, yeah, you can. No problems there, but it's a little bit longer. And that's not how it's displayed on the chart. Uh, we will make the turn to 065 after flying towards here. That is the 65, so that is the line. I will fly direct a little bit and then make that turn. And if we take a look at here, that's the needle. So that will start moving close to the center. And that's when we will know uh, to make the turn. As you see now, it's moving close to the center. When it's about here, we will start turning again. All right. I think this is good. Let's quickly check here. Yep. Let's turn. Let's turn to the final course, 065, and see where we end up. And we should see the airport from the window, and at this point we should report ATC if you are using, we were using ACC like WETSIM or something, like an online network, we should tell them like runway in sight, if we are seeing it, which we are right now. So that is the runway. We need to keep turning a little bit to align with the runway. And we need to keep the needle in the middle. We are 15 miles away. Remember, we need to descend down to six, 2000 at 6 miles. So we might as well start doing this because there is no heights in front of us. We can do this and start descending. 2000 while keeping the needle in the center as much as we can. So we will we will try to align with that. Um, and we will reset the brakes already. Bending lights, runway turn off lights, all the lights are on. And we are just trying to make it perfectly aligned with the needle and get it to the center at any point you can take control and fly this manually or you can control with autopilot like this and take control when you get close to your decision altitude which is 1100 which we programmed here we'll turn to 65 now and see how we are looking in terms of the the needle and everything so we are we need to start descending a little bit faster I guess to 2000 and we can go flaps I think 3 now ok we are off to the left we need to swing right a little bit to align with the runway again and get the needle to the center and try to maintain that the needle should start moving and then we should start turn we should turn back to uh, 065 I see puppies we are a little bit high I'm going to increase the descent rate to get to 2000 and drop the landing gear to create some drag. There we go. So now we are getting close to 2000, 7.7. .7. That is good will be at 2000 we can now 
get it back to 1000 per minute that's checked and we should expect the needle to start moving I'm still trying to align with the runway and I think we need to make a sharp turn and align ourselves like this I should start seeing the needle moving there you go, it's moving now let's see here ok, 6.5 that's good it's aligned so now we can take control at this point start descending and take control of the aircraft and align ourselves by following the needle manually and descending into the runway ourselves let me see if I can see the puppies we are a little high so we need to push the nose down a little bit and start descending a little bit faster than this to catch up to the glide slope and I'm trying to make up some time to align with the runway like so and we will eventually align it is not too bad it's a visual landing hundred above okay hundred above was for our minimum minimums we continue runway in sight we'll align again and we'll go flaps full and we'll check the cabin now alright we are still high we need to catch up to that and we need to align back with the runway we are off to the left again ok that's better we are looking for two red two white puppy this alignment looks good so we will maintain this and make small adjustments as we see fit 500 is checked we are a little bit now low now but we are on we are on glide slope we will come in like this 400 checked make small adjustments 300 nice and slow and we are a little bit high 200 okay still high 100 50 40 30 20 retard all right flow the landing Five. okay and we are on the ground reverse thrust is on on we are slowing down and we will we can probably take this exit a little bit fast but we can take this exit and slow here and clean up the aircraft so flaps are coming in landing lights are turning off that is going to get to taxi and we'll find the parking spot and what we need to do is we need to fire up the APU and make this turn and we'll follow by ourselves a parking spot alright guys that's how you fly a VOR DME arc and the landing was visual as we all saw but welcome to Rhodes Greece off the coast of Turkey in Aegean Sea beautiful island haven't been there myself in real life but maybe I will one day we'll park here 
that's that's what I'm thinking. AP will be online uh, by the time we we park the aircraft. Yep, we will park here. And maybe like stop here because I'm not sure if this is the right parking spot for us. But we parked. It's all GA aircraft. I'm not sure if there is another terminal building for bigger size aircraft. I don't think there is. So this is the only terminal building. I believe APU is now available. So which means we can now start cleaning up and shutting down the engines. So that is done. Engine 2 is coming off. Engine 1 is coming off. And that's it, guys. We'll take care of the rest. But welcome to Rhodes. Let's turn off the lights. And here you go. I hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial and video. Uh, if you did, please give me a thumbs up. That helps tremendously to the channel. And I will see you in the next video.